Hello again and welcome to another I Contain Multitudes Q&A. We are nearing the end of our season, but we know that you viewers still have many unanswered questions about the microbiome. So let's just dive straight in. In December, we put out a microbe minutes short about how some bacteria can help the formation of snow. Uh, and viewer Clara Junker wanted to ask uh, more details about this process. How does it actually happen? Well, it turns out that the freezing point of water is not really zero degrees Celsius as we're taught in school. It's actually minus 38 degrees Celsius if the water is completely pure. Most water isn't. It has little bits of little particles in it that allow the ice crystals to have something on which to form. That nucleation point can be something like a speck of dust or a bit of pollen but it can also be a microbe, a bacterium. And some bacteria have special proteins on their surface that have exactly the right shape to arrange water molecules in the right way so that they can easily form ice crystals. And when those nucleation points are present, then water can freeze at temperatures as high as zero degrees Celsius. So there are lots of different types of microbes that can do this. Uh, one of them is called Pseudomonas syringae, um, and it has some of these ice nucleating proteins on its surface. Um, it uses them to facilitate the formation of frost uh, on the surface of plants so it can get access to the nutrients inside those plants. Uh, and it is in fact the same microbe that we use to make artificial snow. In response to a video we put out earlier this season about antibiotics, commenter Daniel S. pointed out that it's not just Alexander Fleming who deserves credit for this discovery. Two other scientists, Howard Florey and Ernst Chain, also shared in the Nobel Prize that Fleming received. So that's true, but there are subtleties here. It was indeed Alexander Fleming who in 1928 isolated penicillin as the first antibiotic known to humans. Um, he went away on holiday, came back, discovered a mold growing in one of his petri dishes and that was preventing the growth of bacteria. But when he published on his discovery in 1929, he wasn't really concerned about the medicinal aspects of it. He was really using penicillin as a research tool. It was Florian Chain who, almost a decade later, took this, uh, took this molecule into the world of medicine and into the world of mass production. So this question is a tricky one. It's in relation to our episode on fecal microbiome transplants, or FMTs. And the question was, why can't we get antibiotics that only target the bad bacteria instead of the good ones? Well, the problem is that antibiotics hit a lot of processes that take place in microbes and are common to all of them. So it affects their ability to make new proteins or to stabilize their cell walls. And because good bacteria do these things too, antibiotics end up hurting them as well as the bad ones that cause disease. This question has been asked of a few of our videos, which is how similar are our microbes to those of our friends or our family members? It's a good question. There is a lot of variation in the microbiome and my microbes could be very different from yours. But um, when people share spaces or when they come into contact with each other, they do exchange microbes and over time, um, their microbiomes end up being more similar. So we know from past studies that roommates have more similar microbiomes than complete strangers and people in relationships have more similar microbiomes than just roommates. But even small amounts of contact can end up with people exchanging microbes. Um, one of my favorite microbiome studies involve roller derby players. Roller derby is a sport involving a lot of physical contact. And over the course of a game, it turns out that roller derby players end up with more and more similar microbiomes than they did when they started that game, which is a great indication of how much um, contact can lead to the exchange of microbes. That brings us to the end of this video. Um, there's one more episode coming out in this season. That's out next week, so we hope you enjoy that. But thank you so much to everyone who's joined us week on week for these videos. Um, even after this season ends, uh, we're not through answering your questions. We know you've got many more, so please leave them in the comments below, or you could tweet at edyong209 or at tangledbankhhmi. Thank you for watching.